Hi friends, it is a snowy day here in Utah. I am at 5,500 feet on the side of a mountain, and I figured I would, I would explore this area and see if I could get some photos. This is an extremely beautiful area. This is the Salt Lake Valley down there. There are neighborhoods all the way up and down this mountain. I'm wearing thick gloves right now, and it's very hard to operate this camera without pushing every one of the buttons at once. Let's explore, shall we? Okay, so here are advantages and disadvantages of using different cameras and situations like so. Let's start with the iPhone. There are many reasons why the iPhone just absolutely won't work in these conditions. One, because it literally won't work. It turns off, the battery dies and it turns off after three minutes of being outside in, the, uh, in these temperatures. Not to mention, these gloves won't operate the iPhone at all. You can get gloves that operate iPhones, but a lot of times it's not a particularly intuitive experience. This camera, at least so far, works out there, which is fantastic. However, the power button is sunken into the camera, which makes it nearly impossible to turn the camera on and off with these on. But alas, my Nikon D600 is the winner because it has enormous buttons on the back that I can push individually, even with enormous buttons potato fingers. I would rather not have to wear gloves while operating this, but it's certainly doable. So I came up here yesterday and attempted to drive up this hill, but by the time I got to this point, I was inside a cloud and the conditions were so horrible that I turned around. It was a bit of a slippery and harrowing situation for this car. I think this might be a good spot to grab a shot of some sort of interesting vehicle coming up that hill. I'm gonna give my ankles a chance to defrost and move back down the mountain. Oh, look at this, guys. So I was gonna say I've made my way to a park where I've taken photos of paragliders in the past, but I probably won't find any today because this is the snow, haha. <laughs> but there are people paragliding with skis on their feet and I'm excited. Oh, hi there. All right. The conditions are a little more bearable down here.
Okay, here we are back at the much warmer apartment, and I want to talk about a couple of the photos that I took when I was taking uh, photos of the paragliders, and some of the techniques that I was using when I was out there to create unique images. I've been to this location quite a few times and I'm trying to dig deeper and figure out what I can pull off compositionally and create more and more compelling photos. And what I'm trying to do is juxtapose in a pleasing way the subject, which happens to be the paraglider here, in the background. And this is a good example of that. Here we have a photo of a paraglider standing on a hill, his canopy collapsed, he's looking out over the valley. Maybe he's thinking about picking up a bed frame and grabbing some Swedish meatballs from the Ikea down there. In my time at this spot, I've learned what backgrounds tend to be pleasing. A great example is I-15 here. It's a fantastic feature of this location. I also like looking to the, what is this, the west towards the mountains and placing a paraglider on top of that as well. What I'm trying to achieve is an excellent expression from the subject placed on top of the background. The good thing about the background is it doesn't tend to move that much. The subject does move a lot though. In this next photo, we see another thing that I was trying to go after, which I really love to do, which is to cut the canopy off and make it like the person's just hanging from some sort of space swing. Here I decided to put the fellow all the way on the top third of the frame. On the bottom third of the frame, we have downtown Salt Lake City, which looks pretty small from this point, but it's, it's bigger once you get there. This shot is very similar to another shot I created a while back, which happens to be one of my favorite shots of this location. That shot was minus snow. Uh, the snow adds a really interesting variable to the dynamic here. I think this next shot is a fantastic example. It's a rather minimalistic photo in terms of the colors that you see, mostly white and blue. A uh, very beautiful color palette here. You have this single orange cone that pops off the frame in the foreground because of its contrast to the background. Even the paraglider seems to match up with the color palette well, which I'm just now realizing. His canopy is blue and white, and then he's wearing an orange jacket. Unlike with politics, I think we can all agree that this shot would be very different without the snow in the background. You could still get a fine shot, but the dynamic would be very different. An interesting thing to think about is if I were closer, which is a practice that we as photographers like to take on, which is a fantastic practice, the dynamic of this composition would have been very different. Now, not necessarily better or worse, and I want to make that distinction, but if I was closer, I may not have been able to get the uh, the wind cone, whatever it's called, the wind sock, wind sock in there, as well as the paraglider, as well as the vast landscape of the mountains all put together. Also, I want to say that a huge part of the post-processing side of these photos were done using my Lightroom preset collection. Links below, you can check them out. If you do, that would make you an awesome person. I also have free presets. But anyway, that's it for this video. Please feel free to engage below. If if you liked it, please feel free to like it. And if you really liked it, please feel free to subscribe. But I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.